Welcome to the SLP Stress Management Podcast, your place to manage stress, reduce burnout, and find more balance in your life. And if you have been listening in for a while, you know that I, Jesse Andrix, am an SLP, and I have been through up and down and sometimes up and down again with chronic stress and burnout. And one of the things that I always come back to and always like to share is the practice of gratitude and um, turning towards the positive and the things that are going well, especially in a time when it's really easy to look for and to only see the things that are not going well and not working for us. So with this, I am really excited for today's guest and to talk about some of these things. So today I'm excited to have here fellow SLP Marie Murataya from Thanks Morris. So Marie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk about all these things. Yeah, it's such, um, you know, I think in our field, we've been dealing with stress and looking for ways to like, you know, find more joy or keep the joy that we like once felt. And this year, it's just made it like even more challenging. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Um, There's been so many changes. I feel like sometimes um, I can't even keep track of my own mental state. <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's definitely um, like each day can be completely different. And before that would have been like a little bit concerning, I think, for a lot of us. And now we're just like, yep, this is what happens <laughs> every yeah. day. Yeah, it's like, well, okay, how do I feel? Yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's a great thing to check in, but then also it's it's just so strange this year, the way things are all all playing out. So um, for those that are tuning in that may not be familiar with you and, you know, your your work that you do as an SLP and beyond, um, can you share a little bit about your, you know, what you do as an SLP? Yeah, definitely. I am a preschool-based SLP. Um, in a public school district. So I'm essentially just, you know, school-based SLP. Uh, But our preschool um, program, it just looks a little bit different than maybe being in the elementary school or middle school for those SLPs. Because I I went from in the same district being an elementary school SLP and then um, transferred over to preschool my second year. So my clinical fellowship was elementary school. And then I was like, yeah, why not keep challenging myself right away? <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, <laughs> um, and you know, it's it was something that um, I was I wasn't I wasn't advised not to do, but I definitely thinking back to my grad school days, you know, they were like, it takes four to five years to find a groove and to feel like you kind of know what you're doing. And I was thinking to myself when I decided, you know what, I'm going to try preschool my second year. I was kind of like, is this going to be too much for me because I'm only in my second year and now I'm not going to be supervised. And, but I kind of leaned into the, you know, support of my peers and my colleagues. Um, and I'm so grateful for them. And so many great friendships have come from just doing that and having their support. And so um, it was, it was a really good thing, but in my uh, clinical fellowship year, you know, I was split between two school sites, which was pretty stressful. And then going into preschool, you know, and learning that whole beast was pretty stressful. So there were definitely moments where I questioned my decisions to be a speech pathologist in those first two years. And then, uh, def- you know, the, the the burnout creeped up on me every once in a while. And like you said, it kind of, burnout is interesting. I, I um, you know, I think about it in terms of, I've learned to think about it in terms of like, instead of avoiding it, kind of trying to build bridges to get across it. Because sometimes, you know, you don't even realize it's there. And then you're like, whoa, I'm starting to feel really tired and burned out from this. Um, And I think that kind of happened within my first two years. But um, I love, you know, after using, and I know we'll talk about them a little bit in, in in a few minutes here, but after kind of using my little strategies um, and learning how to use things that would help me not only in my life outside of work, but as a speech pathologist, uh, I really just, I mean, I'm so grateful for where I'm at. I love my job as a preschool SLP. I work with kids, um, you know, three to ages three to five 
who are just starting out their school careers and learning how to be students, essentially, which is always a challenge, but also very fun. Um, and I work, my preschool um, program is an all-inclusion preschool. So we have kids um, with very severe needs. They're very impacted to kids that just maybe are working on, um, you know, some phonological processes and have more mild needs. Um, so it, it varies. So some of the kids have a lot of services. They have academic, uh, specialized academic instruction as well as speech. And we work in a very collaborative model to where I have kids where I only pull out for speech. So it's a really cool environment. Plus there's, there are, um, it's like 50% children on an IEP, on an individualized education plan. And then 50% of those kids are considered um, general education. So they don't have any identified needs. So it's really cool because there's a lot of peer modeling, um, and I think it's just – it's such a magical setting. It looks mm -hmm. a lot different right now, <laughs> but, um, you know, I've really – my my first full two years of preschool, luckily, uh, you know, was weren't virtual, and so I really got a good taste of how that inclusion um, benefits my students, but also, you know, the professionals who are working with those students. So that's kind of like my background as a speech pathologist from my clinical fellowship to now. And I don't foresee myself leaving preschool anytime soon. I love this age and I love what I do with my students. But um, yeah. yeah, it is a really like fun an incredibly challenging age. I, mm -hmm. when I was in the schools, um, it was my, I think my third and fourth year as an SLP, um, there were like, there was a primary school and an elementary school on the same campus and a middle school. And I was at all three at one point. Um, and so I had from, and, and they had a, um, an, a preschool program at the primary school. So I had from age three to eighth grade and some, I mean, some of the eighth graders were like 14 or 15. Um, so it was, it was a really uh, interesting year. And that was actually the year that I, I decided to leave for a while. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was so, they, they were just the, the really, you know, young kids. They're so, they can be so like excited about what they're yeah. doing, you know, and like that they get to like be at school with a big kid. And some days they have days where they like don't want to be there at all. And it's incredibly challenging, but uh, you know, it was always like you, I never knew what I was going to get that day, but it could make it really fun. And now I have, uh, my daughter is four and I have her at home right now. Um, and it's the same thing. Like I, it's so much fun. And then some days it's like, you know, I'm the mom, I'm not her teacher. And it's like, she doesn't, you know, she's like, what's, you're not a speech therapist, mom. You don't, you know, your mom. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but so I, you know, it's really fun, the stuff that we get to like learn and to see them just like everything kind of clicking in their brains at this age. Um, but I'm also super thankful for, you know, the times that we were able to send her to preschool and hopefully the times that we're able to send her back to preschool before she starts school, because, being a preschool teacher and, and being a preschool speech therapist or working with that age, like all the time, like I am so grateful for that because I know that like for me, I know that I don't have everything to give, you know, to my daughter. So knowing that there's people out there working, like it's just, I love it. I'm it's, it's great. So even on those challenging days, um, just know that I appreciate everything you're doing and it's not even oh. my kids. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I do. I do love it. And even now, like with the challenges of being a virtual speech, preschool speech therapist, I should say, because it's funny. It's like, I'm not just a virtual speech therapist, but I'm like a preschool. This is, yeah. I mean, it's hard for any child, I think, to adjust to this. But my preschoolers, you know, I it's funny, like the first three weeks, after about week three, they got it. And I was like, we're getting a groove. We've got this. But then like last week was week six or seven. And I'm like, they are so done. <laughs> it was like exciting for a little while and now they're like okay this is enough yeah, yeah we you. we went through that um in the spring when we we pulled my daughter um out of school and i was going to be home so we're like you could be home too and um but we would still do you know we could still call in for circle time and they would do mm -hmm. you know where, where we'd do like a google hangout or something or you know like would be able to yeah. to watch and join in and and it did not work it was <laughs> like we tried a few times and then we were like all right we're gonna you know so 
it is such a, like, they're so excited and some days are really great. And then some days are really hard. So I can see like, you know, they're so excited for it. And then after a while they're like, Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then we come up with new ways to make it exciting. Yeah. We keep trying. I keep downloading different backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, I will, tr I will be doing this and, and being enthusiastic about it as long as I'm told I'm doing it, you know? So, yeah. Well, and I can see that that does, you know, like it, I can see how stress could definitely grow from that and burnout mm -hmm. could be there. And like you said, and like we talked about it, you know, it comes and goes burnout sometimes. And like you said, sometimes you don't even know that it's there until you're like, oh gosh, this is burnout. Like I'm in it again. Mm -hmm. um, and I like how you talked about just creating a bridge to, to get, mm -hmm. you know, get over, not, not get over it. Like, oh my gosh, get over it. But like to get through it and to get go across it. Yeah. 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 I love that. So what are some of the things that, you know, you use or strategies that you've been able to come up with to use in your life to help you do that? Well, you know, and definitely the practice of gratitude. And that's something that <clears throat> I've had kind of ingrained in me since I was little. Um, you know, my mom taught my siblings and I from the get go, like, if you don't have a grateful heart, you're going to have a hard time finding joy. I mean, she didn't say it like that, but that was kind of, you know, if we were um, uh, having moments where we were, you know, having issues turn taking with each other or fighting or whatever, um, my mom would kind of try to instill in us, you know, be grateful for your brother. And, and these are the reasons why you can be grateful for him. Um, uh, you know, if we ever fought, she would, she'd kind of make us make up with a hug and, and try to feel that gratitude with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was in high school, I'm, you know, especially in high school, I've, I think I'm not as type A as I used to be. Um, and a part of that is because I've learned how to trust in just, you know, the things that I've, the, the changes that happen, I still haven't, you know, a hard time adjusting to change. But when I was in high school, I was like, I have to have straight A's and I have to, um, everything has to be in its perfect order, um, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I would have, you know, kind of mental breakdowns when studying for tests where I couldn't, you know, uh, I, I just wasn't grasping the concepts and things like that. And um, my mom for Christmas one year, one of my gifts was a gratitude journal, just a composition book. But I think she really wanted to try and help me like understand like, you know, yeah, you get frustrated about a lot of things um, because they're not the way you want them to be. But look at all the things you have going on that you can be grateful for. Um, and so that was a really fun thing. I, I mean, I didn't really quite get the concept of it when I was a teenager, but I did it. Like I, every night filled up that journal and I, um, you know, flash forward to years later after I kind of stopped doing that. Uh, but I was in college. I found myself back in that same cycle, like freaking out over chemistry exams and, um, and anything else going on, not just schoolwork, but like anything else going on in life. And, um, when I was in my earlier twenties, I kind of was like, oh, maybe I should try that journaling thing again, you know? And I've, I've always been, I've always been one of those people that kind of gets lost in my own thoughts, like very reflective. Like anytime anything happens, I'm constantly not necessarily overthinking it, but I'm kind of trying to figure out the ways it could have gone better. And, um, I, uh, started, you know, kind of doing little gratitude journaling here and there, not very consistently, but it definitely, I would notice like the days, the mornings I'd wake up after doing it the night before, I felt a lot better. Um, and then in my, um, during grad school, my autism clinic, my professor for that course had us, instead of doing soap notes, uh, we did reflective kind of journaling type of things. So it was still considered our note, but she wanted us to be talking about us as clinicians, not just what the client was doing. Um, oh, and that was interesting. It was. That's cool. It was so cool. Like I, <laughs> I was just like, um, so amazed by how much I learned about myself because I think, and I, I know this isn't true for everybody, but I definitely think when you're in those, you know, early 
college years, even into grad school, I you do question, you know, am I am I cut out for this? Like, do I really want to be doing this? Because there are challenges, and I think it's a very humanistic quality to to be like, eh, this is getting challenging. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Um, but those reflective journals, because I I was definitely at a point where I had a lot going on outside in, you know, very unhealthy relationship and, um, uh, you know, just things going on with family. It was just a very challenging semester and it couldn't have come at a better time that I was doing these reflective notes for my, um, my client who had very severe needs. So I don't know, it just like, it showed me that I had a lot one to be grateful for because we were actually making a lot of progress with my client and then I was making progress as a clinician like through like reflecting and doing that and getting to sit with my professor and talk about my reflections um you know because she wanted us to be very real I remember at one point I wrote in the journal entry I feel like I'm floundering like (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing and so she called me into her office one day to just talk about it she was like you feel like you're floundering and that's a great place to be. And I didn't understand that at first. And so she explained to me, you know, you like, that's such a great place to be learning. And she said, not everybody is, is as honest as you are about how you feel when you're in a situation. And she's like, but you do such a good job when you're floundering to find out what your client needs. Um, Instead of just trying to think like through the textbooks of things and be like, well, this is what I should do in this situation because, you know, the research says this. She's like, you just look at your client and you're like, he really wants to go swing right now. So I'm going to take him outside. Um, And she's like, it might feel that way, but that's how it goes. That's life, you know? Yeah, that is an amazing lesson. I know. And I I mean, I, I wish that I had had something like that. I think that a lot of programs... Um, I mean, and I graduated in, uh, I, I, <laughs> I always like cringe when I say this now, cause it's like so long ago, but I graduated in 2008, um, mm-hmm. which seems like not that long ago, but that was over 10 years ago. And yeah. so I know programs have changed a lot since then, but it was definitely, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of reflecting and if it was, it was reflecting on what went wrong, not, yeah. you know, and, and just kind of looking at, okay, what can you like like focusing on what are you going to fix to make it perfect next time. Um, right. So just giving that opportunity to just be honest and then say, this is where you learn to grow. Oh, that would have been like a breath of fresh air. And I, I, yeah. And I needed that, I think. And, and it, cause it kind of, you know, she said it and I felt like this is translating into my whole life right now. Like I, and it kind of really, um, you know, cause I felt like I could really compartmentalize like, schoolwork and clients and all that stuff, but it really blended everything and taught me that I can learn so much as like from my work as a grad clinician and then probably later as a clinician um, about being a human in the world. And um, it just kind of opened my eyes. And like you said, it wasn't just looking for the problem, but she really wanted us to be looking for like kind of just, you know, in the simplest form, wanted us to look for where we could be grateful for that session. Um, And it really just resonated with me. And a big part of it is because I loved sitting down and doing my journals. And um, it really made me like, I'm going, I'm not going to stop now. Like, I'm going to keep doing this. And I had a kind of a personal goal um, going in because after that semester, we went into our medical externships, which was scary for me. (laughs) Um, And so, but I was like, but look at like, I have this gift to take away now. Like, I can, so I had a goal. I was like, every week, every Friday, I'm going to, or actually, well, I was working a part-time job too. So it really ended up being on Sunday mornings, but I was like, I'm going to journal about the week, like, because I know this is challenging and I know I'm really scared for it. So I'm going to promise myself that I'm going to keep doing those reflections. Um, and I did, and, uh, I would just kind of use them as my notes going into my, like that were getting put into the whatever, online platform for my university. Um, (laughs) it It was good. It was perfect because it really, again, just solidified that, the idea of being reflective as a clinician. And then, um, it took, you know, it, yeah, things were scary, but it kind of took a like a layer off of it, like because I knew I was very trusting in the fact that there's going to be a lot of challenges, but I'm going to learn from them. 
Um, and even in my moments where I was crying on Friday afternoons, like I knew like, it's going to be okay. It's going to get better. Um, yeah. So it's just, it was just such a, an awesome thing to have. And then going into my clinical fellowship, I kept that. And I actually had started recording just like after sessions that were hard or really good, I would get my, um, my iPhone and put a voice memo in <laughs> about it. And that was, that was an idea that I, well, I started my idea for having my own podcast way back then. Um, because I was like, I just want to reflect on things and I want to, you know, talk about what was fun and talk about what was not so great. So. Yeah. Oh, and that is, that is such like a, I don't know, such a great thing to do to have that, you know, to, to look back. That's one of the things like when I first started hearing about gratitude journaling, um, one of the reasons to do it was like, you know, to have these journals, I guess. And one of the reasons to like record it or write it down or like have something that you can actually like go back to was so that you like end up with this library of things that were like beautiful in your life that you may not remember because they're just so simple on some days or, you know, might be like really small, but in that moment it meant something. And when you can look back, it gives you like this really great thing to look back on instead of thinking like, well, that year was like really terrible and all these things went mm -hmm. wrong and I was in grad school and it was so hard. And then you can like look back and be like, oh yeah, that was really hard. But then also I got this really wonderful moment out of it. Like I always thought that was just like such a great extra reason to do gratitude. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's been so fun, even just looking back in the last year when I look back at old entries or whatever. Um, you're right. It's like, oh my gosh, I, it's funny because I found, um, again, I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but I found, uh, drafts of the journal that I've created, um, from a year ago. <laughs> and cause I, what I would do is I'd create like a rough draft and then I would, uh, use it for like a week to see how I liked it. And oh, I was having a hard time about a year ago. <laughs> Um, you know, and I don't, I don't quite remember. And now I can look back on whatever I wrote about and be like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm grateful for that experience, but I can also laugh a little bit at it because I was so emotional and it was not even that big a deal. Um, but it's just, it's just interesting. It's cool to be like, and look, I already forgotten it. Like, I don't know. So yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. of learning. It is. It's really cool. And I, I love that like when you're thinking about, especially when, you know, if anybody listening is in grad school or is, you know, just has a lot of paperwork to do, but taking that like stance of how you were saying it was more about being reflective in your note taking that you were submitting. And it was like your weekly journaling practice. Like that is such a great way to think of the notes that we do and the paperwork that we do. Like if we think of it as just journaling instead of paperwork, that can just mm -hmm. change the whole thing, even if you write exactly the same thing down, you yeah. know? Yeah. I actually had someone, that was one comment. It was, I've, I've only ever gotten this comment one time from a webinar. One of the questions when I was saying, you know, that, that journaling is a really great way to help manage your stress. And um, one of the responses was, but I already have enough paperwork to do. <laughs> I feel like I have more paperwork to do. And I was like, oh, I never thought of it that way. But you can flip it the other way too and make it think like oh, you have more journaling you can do, you know, and kind of shift it. Or you can yeah. record it or you can like think it in your head if yeah. you really just don't want to write it down or have it, you know, anywhere else to look hey. back on. Exactly. And I always stress that. I'm like, because I send out, you know, through my email subscriptions, I send out weekly prompts and like gratitude prompts or just mindfulness type of things. And um, something I always stress is like, if you don't want to sit down and write right now, because I know that's time consuming and I know, you know, we're all uh, very concerned about how we spend our time. Not that I think that is like my most important time, but um, I know that it could be I don't want to add any more stress when I suggest these things. And so I've always said, like, use it as a conversation starter. You know, one of the things my boyfriend and I do sometimes um, is like, tell me three good things that happened to you today. Um, and and just do that. Just talk about it. You know, as long as I think the idea is as long as you're being reflective and looking in, you know, inward first, because that helps um, that helps with how you react to the outside experiences. Uh, it's 
you know, or like you said, even just think about it just because it might get your, you know, I notice sometimes when I read certain things in the morning, they always come back throughout the day. I'm like, oh, and you know, you just have little flashbacks of mm-hmm. whatever was really powerful or something. Um, so just ingraining it in your, in your mind for the, you know, at the beginning of your day, and then it might come back to surprise you, or you might just find yourself thinking a little bit more about it. And, uh, you know, why not? help yourself shift your perspective to something a little bit more positive during a time of stress. So, yeah. And having the little, you know, in intention almost like without even realizing it. So maybe not an intention because then you'd be realizing it, but you know, having that like a little bit of like your brain has already been triggered to, to notice something good. And so then you start to like that filters in without you even having to realize it. And that's such an amazing thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I know another SLP I was talking to um, recently said that she does the same thing you did, like with her family and and with her kids. Um, That's how they end their day is they talk about, you know, what was a challenge, but then also what was like a really good moment from your day or what were the like three big things that, Mm -hmm. that you really enjoyed from your day. And it's like their practice that you know, they just started doing without even really thinking about it as being a practice of gratitude. And then they realized like, oh yeah, that is what we're doing. And this is, you know, one of the biggest things that brings them kind of like joy throughout their, you know, that it just kind of infuses joy in their day. And, um, and I know for me, I was reading recently, um, I was reading a book and they talked about that, you know, when you want to practice gratitude, um, you know, you, you can journal about it and that's probably the best way to do it. But one thing, you know, if you realize at the end of your day, you haven't done it yet, or, you know, you want to start your day that even if you just kind of like, as you're falling asleep, reflect on some things that you're grateful for, that that can be when you, you know, have this practice. So sometimes I know that's what I've started doing. Um, especially if I'm having trouble falling asleep or even if it's not trouble falling asleep, but I'm just like, I want to be asleep already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's very like it's one of those things that it has that like nice calming effect, and then you start to you know not think about all of the things that our minds kind of wander to when we're waiting to fall asleep sometimes, and mm-hmm. instead it's just you know a moment to reflect on things that that we're thankful for, or grateful for. So right. yeah, so many ways to infuse it into our days. I love it. Yeah. So you've mentioned. Um, and I definitely want to talk about this is your, that that you have a gratitude journal and that that is like one of the things that you do is that you, you know, you do journal about this and you do practice gratitude daily. So Mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the journal that you have and, and kind of how you, how this came about? Sure. I, Um, like I said, my mom gave me my very first gratitude journal years and years and years ago. And, you know, that's like kind of the start of it. Um, but I had, I love collecting journals, first of all. So if I'm at, you know, Michael's or, um, Target and I find the cute notebook or journal, I'm like, well, I'll just get it. And then it'll be my next one. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, they never go to waste. They're always used. And then I don't know where to put them after. So they end up like under my bed. But, <laughs> um, it, You know, so I've got quite the collection now because it's been years of this. But, you know, and I was always that kid. Like I always had a diary um, it, growing up and loved just writing about my day. And lo- I just I do like that is my personal thing. I love pen to paper writing. Mm-hmm. It is so therapeutic for me. Um and actually, just this morning when I did a morning journal, I was like, I couldn't stop. I was like, oh, this like I have, wow, I didn't even know I had all this in my brain. Um, and so that um, the practice of doing that every day for me has been, I mean, for the last like year and a half now, I've been doing consistently every morning and then every night. But I've been doing every night pretty consistently, like listing out my gratitudes for the last uh, it's however long I've been with my boyfriend because we both start like when we, four years, um, because <laughs> he, I mean, I was doing it, like I said, like through that last part of, or, um, 
my second semester of grad school into my medical externship, I was pretty much doing it on a weekly basis. But then we started dating and he uh, admitted to me early on, like he does a lot of gratitude journaling and just journaling every day. And so he suggested I try doing it every day as well. And so I gratitude journaled every night. Um, and it was really good and really helpful, especially during, you know, studying for my exit exams in grad school uh -huh. and, and all of that. But I realized, um, you know, sometimes, like you said, like sometimes I forget to do it and I would start feeling really guilty. Um, and, and so I had to really let that part go and be like, it's okay. I just can think about what I'm grateful for. Say it out loud to myself. It could be a little affirmation. Um, and you know, but I, I liked, I like having consistency. I, that is still the type A in me um, and having that routine. And it, and it was really beneficial to me. And then another thing I realized though, that I didn't quite like was sometimes I find myself just being really repetitive. Like um, I'm grateful for my health, my family, like, and those are great things to be grateful for, but sometimes I, it didn't feel as meaningful because uh -huh. I wasn't really thinking as deeply about it. And, um, you know, if you're, if, if I'm really needing to get to bed by 10 o'clock because I have to be up early, like whatever, I'm like, just, okay, just go, which is better than nothing. Um, but, uh, on Instagram about a year and a half ago, I also started sharing some of my gratitude lists because it was kind of my way of being like, Ooh, I'm going to share this because then maybe I'll be, um, it'll, it'll help me be more thoughtful if I kind of put it out there, um, and share it with people. Plus, like, I want to see if people might be interested in sharing theirs back with me. And so I would tell people, you know, tell me what you're grateful for in the comments and things like that. And surprisingly, that was like one of the biggest, um, those are the biggest responses I would get in like my posts on Instagram, uh, was people sharing back what they're grateful for, which that's pretty cool. Like, it is. I mean, I'd rather like that's, I mean, obviously, my Instagram handle is thanks Morris. It has the word thanks <laughs> in it. And um, that's just something that, you know, that platform for me was always in, in my mind was like, I want it to be a place of goodness and gratitude. Um, I just don't know how that's going to happen. And so once I started doing the gratitude lists and actually sharing those, that's when people really responded to what I was putting out there, which is really cool. And so um, last summer in 2019, uh, I had the idea of creating a journal um, because what I would do on those those posts on Instagram and my captions was kind of change it up, like three things you're excited about or um, three things you're grateful for, three things you're going to get done today or whatever. And um, I realized like I like having a different prompt. And mm -hmm. so I started using different prompts for myself. Um, not like on a routine basis, but I, you know, I would say, okay, tonight I'm going to write three things I'm excited about or 10 things I'm excited about for the next month or make, or maybe write my goals out or my intentions and stuff like that. And I was like, well, how cool if everybody had a journal like this? Like, cause I was just doing it in my like blank page journals. Um, and so, you know, my <laughs> wonderful, I have to, I always shout my boyfriend out for this one. He does get the credit because he's very creative person and he's always like well then make it you know like <laughs> whereas in my brain I'm like I have a full-time job I'm a school-based SLP there's enough paperwork that sometimes I bring home on the weekends um and uh you know all these other things right I have all the excuses in the world um and he was like well you just there's there's programs like you know and we both were in the Adobe software programs and stuff and he's like you you have access to all this stuff or you could just google and so right. like, <laughs> that's always yeah. the fact or we can uh, google yeah. it <laughs> google it youtube whatever and so um he was you know he's like well here just we were house sitting at the time and he was like just uh draft out a journal um what would you want in it and so i did i just sat there and then spent like two and a half hours just making different i putting different ideas out in my like on my planner that i had brought with me <laughs> um and it was just really cool because I got so excited. And so um, it took some months of, for me to learn the programs and put it all together digitally. Um, but it was really exciting to get to think of different prompts and different ways to keep people engaged and to build, you know, for me personally, because it's, it's kind of like my brain out in a journal. And so... Um, I was like, well, sometimes, like I said, I'll get a little bit frustrated with myself if I don't do it every night. So one of my ways to um, 
problem solve for that for myself was, okay, well, if it if it's a daily journal, if it's Sunday through Saturday, and I have to put the dates, and um, I you know <laughs> I have a different prompt every night, like you know, then I know like, oh, it's Wednesday tonight. I get to do, you know, my, uh, the prompt I make up or whatever it is. So that was like for me, but then I also wanted, you know, I was like, well, what if some people don't want to journal every night? I mean, like they're not as worried about it as I am. So, you know, it's kind of like, well, then they don't have to, I mean, they could do whatever they want. So. Yeah, no, um, that is super helpful though. And I, I mean, I love when you have to add your own dates into things because it is like, if you, you can do it, like you said, to either that way you're like writing it out saying like, no, these are the dates I'm doing it. Or if you miss a date, it's not like you have to like cross out this whole like thing and never be able yeah. to use it again. But I love that you switch it up and, and that that was like how you mentioned that, you know, it would get kind of routine at times yeah. and not in the good sense of routine, but like monotonous. And that yeah. happens for me too, that sometimes I think like, well, I have, you know, my kids, my husband, my, you know, my health, my home, like I have to put those things down. Yeah. And then if I put like, I'm grateful for really, really good coffee. And that's what I'm actually grateful for that day because it's like, it was just so good. And I was like, so tired that, you know, it's like, you kind of feel like, well, but I also have to put down these other things that I should be grateful for you know, or that I should be writing down instead of right. this like, kind of more superficial thing. And then it kind of takes away from the whole experience because it's like, it doesn't mean that you're not grateful for these other things, but in that day, it just might be that you want to write down different things. So, exactly. and then, and then you're just like in your head more and then it's like, well, this is like defeating the whole purpose. And then you don't <laughs> ever pick up your pen again to write in the journal. Right. So I love that you switch it up for yourself, but then that's, you know, something that you gave other people to look at too, because having different things throughout the week to think about and to look forward to, like, like I can already feel like that would be amazing. You know, that just makes yeah. it so much more fun to do. And so much more like you get to, you know, be a little more creative with what you're writing down. And then it also takes away some of the guilt of like the, well, I should put this down, but I put that down all the time. I really want to put mm -hmm. something else down. And it's like, it's, it's uh, fabulous. <laughs> like that's yeah. just, that's an amazing journal. No, I, I, it has been fun. And actually one of my friends who um, got one, she messaged me a couple of days ago and she said, I've been doing it in the mornings and I just love how, you know, I was, I had to get, I had it, she's a speech pathologist and she had a session like within 10 minutes, but she really knew she just needed to take a few minutes for herself. So she said she opened up and the journal and she loved having the prompts because it kind of helped her one, just take that moment and sit with herself, but then she was on a time crunch. And so, um, it was just really cool to hear her say that because I didn't even think about it that way, <laughs> but that's kind of why I, I made it the way I made it to be a little bit more customizable. Um, in, I mean, in some ways it is just, just to, you know, kind of through all the things that in the last couple of years have worked for me in terms of being reflective or setting goals for the day or the week um, to it's all in one little book that, you know, you can use at morning, noon and night or one out of the three or twice a week if you need to. <laughs> but Yeah, that that is that is awesome. And and um, yeah, I love that you mentioned someone used it in the morning. I think we hear a lot about doing gratitude at night. And I know I talk about it, too, because like from everything that like kind of I've learned like one of the really good things to do when you're stressed is to end your day on a positive note because then your whole day kind of feels more positive like you're when you reflect back on it it's ended in this great way so it makes the whole thing seem a little bit more positive even if it was really hard and mm -hmm. then you also have this whole like bank of experiences to pull from when you're doing your your journaling but it doesn't mean that you can't also do it in the morning right you know right so I like that someone like did it as their, you know, quiet time before they started mm -hmm. their, their day. Um, that's just, that's really awesome. And oh my gosh, we definitely like as SLPs, I feel like we need quiet time before we start our day and we rarely take yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> I imagine with preschool, you need quiet time before you start your day. 
Oh, a hundred percent. And I don't even let myself look at my phone. I, I specifically bought an alarm clock from Target last year because I was like, <laughs> I don't even want to look at my phone in the morning or I don't want that to be my alarm. Like I want, I just, I need to wake up and journal and then make tea and then coffee and then I'll look at my phone. But like, I can't, I just need that time um, to get my mind set up for the day. Um, and I, you know, and part of the way that I created the journal again from my own, I mean, just the way that I do things is I use, and I, I have a little letter in the front, on the front page of the journal to whoever gets it to kind of let them know, like, use this how you want. This is how I use it, but you make it your own. Um, but the way I do it is I have blank pages, um, like on on the left, that's a blank lined page. And that's where I personally put all my morning thoughts. So it's totally unprompted because that's just what I need. But then on the other side, if on the um, the right side, if I do, I'm like, I, I, I know I need this quiet time, but I don't know what to write. Great. There's my prompt. <laughs> nice. Otherwise, I use it at night. But. Awesome. Awesome. So do you have any tips because for for kind of incorporating this into, um, you know, for SLPs that want to start doing this and, and having some journaling practices. Mm -hmm. I know you've talked a lot about like you take quiet time in the morning before you begin your day and you, um, you, you know, take time at night. Do you have any tips for incorporating that? I know a lot of SLPs like, and just a lot of people in general, like, wake up and rush and then they yeah. rush through their day and then they rush when they get home and then they're rushing to get to bed on time to rush to sleep to rush to wake up and do it again I know. and I mean I've been there and it is like so stressful like that is when I was like completely in chronic stress and burnout it was just yeah. like rush 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 so do you have any tips for incorporating those like slower quiet moments, reflective time into the day? Definitely start with belly breath. Um, and I would do like three deep belly breaths where you breathe in um, through your nose for like four seconds, I think it is. Then you hold it for four seconds and then exhale for six seconds. So you really push out all the air. Um, and doing that three times in a row really just helps personally for me and from when I've talked to a lot of other people um, or even like yoga instructors who have told me this <laughs> where they're like, it really does calm your brain down um, and gives you kind of, it's like you're giving yourself through those breaths permission to stop. And even mm -hmm. if that's all you do, like sometimes I'll do it in between sessions, um, like sit down or ground myself in some way, even if I'm standing, I've done it while I'm getting ready in the morning. Like I can just feel my, my blood pumping through my body a little, like my heart is beating a little bit faster for some reason that day. Maybe I have an IEP meeting I'm nervous about or whatever. And I'll be like curling my hair. And then I'm like thinking to myself, like you are not feeling right right now. Like you just don't feel in tune with anything. And so I'll just sit there and do my belly breaths and like, be standing on, you know, just making sure my feet feel firmly planted or whatever, whatever it is. But sometimes that's just the best transition into um, feeling a little bit calmer. But then I also think I'll like, I'll do that when I wake up in the morning, sometimes when I feel more of that rush, like, I don't know if I have time to sit and journal right now um, because it gives me more permission to sit and journal. Like mm -hmm. almost I'm, I'm less worried after I do that about losing time. Um, so I think that's like my biggest suggestion, but then another really good one, and this is one of the prompts that I, I always recommend <clears throat> is do like a quick, I call it a quick three by three. So you just think or write three things you're grateful for, and then three things you're going to check off your to-do list because, um, uh, for me personally, like knowing like, okay, I told myself I'm checking these things off my to-do list takes the stress away from the impending um, and ever growing to-do list. And so yeah. that's, that's a huge one. And I love sometimes like, like that is, will be for every day of the week. That is my morning journal because I am busy that week and I have, or I mean, not to say busy, but I just, I'm on more of like a time limit with a lot of things or whatever it is. So um, 
those are my two biggest things. Like if you can incorporate those two things into your routine, um, either one of them or both of them every day to kind of help you take that time, do, do those things. Um, and yeah. then, you know, there's always like the affirmations and all that stuff, which are all really great. But if you can at least do those two things, I think, um, you'll find that you can make time for more maybe through your week. Yeah. And they, I mean, they always say, and, and I mean, it's true, like the hardest part is getting started with something yeah. that, you know, because we tell ourselves we don't have time for it and like that it won't be worth it if we can't do the full blown version of something. And, um, you know, it's what we think a lot with like exercise and movement. It's like, well, mm -hmm. if I can't do an hour, then it's not worth doing five minutes, but it's like, well, but you could do five minutes here. You could do five minutes there. And yeah. even just five minutes, you know, you get something out of it. And, um, yeah, I mean this, like taking those breaths, that would take like a minute, you know, and then doing a quick, like you said, the quick three by three, which I love that. Um, <laughs> like you could do all of this within like five minutes, even if you really had to, and it would just completely change your whole day. Yeah, exactly. Oh, awesome. Those are really great ways to incorporate it. And then I feel like, like you said, it, it ends up giving you the permission to take more time that once you get started with that, you find that like, okay, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. I have more time to keep going with it or to add in this other piece of it or to, to, you know, come back to this tonight and do more. And, um, I think that's amazing permission to give. So yeah. Yeah. Those are awesome tips. Those are really great. Thank you for sharing those. Oh, of course. Well, nice. So where can, um, where can SLPs find your journal and some of your, you know, you mentioned your, your weekly newsletter. Um, where can we find all of this goodness from you? That's all on thanksmorris.com. All so right. All one word. Um, and you, uh, it should, I mean, it is the homepage right now and it probably will be for a while. <laughs> um, so the journal is there and then, um, it also prompts you to uh, sign up for my email subscription list, which is where I post or where I send out the weekly um, prompts from. And I actually do that every Wednesday. So that comes out in bright and early in the morning um, for everybody on that list on Wednesdays. And then if you get a journal, um, it's you know recommended that you subscribe to that list. But if you're already on it, obviously, then you don't need to because on Wednesdays in the journal, um, it actually, the prompt says, get your prompt from things more stuff <laughs> because I wanted a way, you know, I was like, well, I don't want every day to be the same. I want, um, I want a way to have people feel like, again, like I said, I really look forward to those days personally. Sometimes I forget the prompt that I came up with because I'll come up with it over the weekend. So then I'm like, oh, shoot, I gotta go look. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's also been really fun. Recently, I did a journal giveaway where I had people people are, um, the contestants write out the prompts and now I'm going to, you know, I, I said, I'll use these in those weekly newsletters. So it's really fun because I'm kind of trying to share what everybody has created in those and, and help people, you know, cause I don't, people don't always want to hear my prompts or they do, but maybe sometimes I, you know, need a little bit of help with the creativity of them. I don't want to be too redundant or whatever it is. Um, and so that's been really fun because I'll start sharing those actually this week. Um, oh, that is so awesome. I have quite a few and, and I'm just so grateful for everybody who, uh, who put those in because they're, they're really good and they're things that I wouldn't think about. And I hope to keep doing that, you know, and have people submit um, ideas for prompts along the way because I'm, I'm one brain, <laughs> right? So, you know, it's like, it's nice to, to hear what other people would want to write about or, um inspire other people to do with. So yeah, so you can find that there and then Instagram, same thing at thanks Morris, but those are really the two main places. Well, awesome. I will put those in the show notes so people can find those easily and, um, you know, they can subscribe and look forward to those weekly prompts. If not, you know, have the full blown journal and then head over there, you know, and, and find those surprise prompts for the week. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything and for really, you know, showing how this can be not just like another to-do list item, but something that can be 
part of your life and part of your day and, and really become a way of living. Yeah. Well, thank you for the chance to share it. It's, it's just so fun for me to talk about because it has been so um, transformative for me. So I hope that other people find the value and the power in it too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And again, I will put all of this in the show notes for anyone that is listening. You can head, you know, head down and click on that and and head right over and get some of this gratitude, goodness. And thank you all for tuning in today. Are you ready to truly manage your stress, reduce burnout, and finally find more balance in your life? Well, the SLP Stress Management course is here to help you do just that. In this eight-week course, you'll take a deep dive into what stress is and why it affects SLPs so much, as well as learn practical stress management tools as you build a step-by-step system that works for your stress and your daily needs. You can check this out now at jessieandrix.com and I hope to see you in the course.